Hello and welcome to this episode of U.S. Grace Force with Father Richard Heilman and Doug Barry. I'm your host, Angela Tomlinson, and we also have Molly Marion right here in the studio, a homeschooler who's been interning at WSFI Catholic Radio. So welcome, 7.50 a.m. and 88.5 FM. Um, well, there's been a lot going on, Father Heilman. For those of you who aren't familiar with him, he is the um, author of five books, including Peace Through Strength Prayer Journal, and he has more in the hopper, but we can't talk about that right now. He is <laughs> oh, yeah. started the now you started the Coast to Coast Rosary and the Combat Rosary, right, Father? Yeah. So right now, this is our big. Um, uh, it's a, let's call it what it is, is a spiritual warfare campaign, mm -hmm. but it's it's to pray grace into our nation. You know, that's from Two Chronicles seven fourteen. You know, if we look upon his face and and seek his forgiveness, uh, you know, it it goes on, but it, it will he'll heal our land. He'll heal our land. And that's what we really pray for every year. And we pray what's called the 54-day Rosary Novena. Uh, it actually ha has a, a, a beautiful uh, story to it, but it it, it, it starts with a, a young lady who was uh, desperately ill and um, Fortuna, uh, a girlie. And, uh, and she um, was told by the Blessed Mother that if she prayed three novenas, uh, in asking for petition and then three in, in prayer and Thanksgiving uh, that she would find healing. And she did since then. Uh, and that was actually, uh, it was uh, the same year that uh, Pope Leo the 13th wrote the St. Michael prayer. Wow. And that was exactly 33 years before the uh, Fatima apparitions and uh and 33 years is the life of christ so it's it's but but it's it's very powerful it's seen a lot of miracles we're praying our petition is for strength and unity in the church and then for protection for the family in our nation and uh, our prayer every year is similar to that uh but we wanted to pray especially for strength and unity in our church um we we want to become spiritually strong and we want to get become unified there's so much division right now and threatening of so much more uh, to come. We really need to be praying so much so that this year I actually decided to do something I did way back when a strip club opened across the street from my church. And I was um, inspired to pray every morning before the sun rise, rises on this, what's called Blue Mound State Park. But if you come toward my church down one of these roads, you'll see what looks like two mountains in the background behind my church, but it's that that's blue mountain state park. And there's a, there's a lookout tower. You actually climb 64 steps to get to the top, which I love 64. I'm actually wearing 64 on my Jersey because <laughs> <laughs> that was my Jersey in high school, but it was also my favorite uh, football player, the green Bay Packer, Jerry Kramer. But anyways, and there's a lot of significance to 64 that I won't get into right now, but, but we, uh, you, cl I climbed to the top every morning and I pray this um, special rosary. And it has, after each decade, there's a little line, a uh, couple of lines that, that we pray afterwards. And uh, you offer a spiritual bouquet is what it calls. And then uh, a, a, there's a little prayer before and a little prayer after. And it's just beautiful. But again, it's brought many, many miracles. And we've seen a lot of miracles since we started doing this. I actually started in 2015, just threw it on the internet. And then we got a team together in 2016. And uh, now we conclude always, we go from August 15th, to October 7th, but on the Sunday nearest to October 7th, we've been gathering right on the nation's capital uh, mall and uh, with what we call the national rosary rally. And uh, we do that. And then we ask everybody around the nation to get together in groups in public places. If they can, you can do it at church if you want, but, but we ask if people will be out in public in groups and there's actually a, a website people can go to. It's called rosarycoasttocoast.com, where you can get the information about this. But also you can sign up your group, you know, that, that you're going to be praised. So that this Google map fills up with all these balloon pins. And it's it's pretty cool. And so, we, again, we've been doing it since 2016. Seen a lot of miracles. A lot of people are attesting to personal miracles they're having as well. And uh, it's it's very, very powerful. So October 9th. Sunday, October 9th, the whole nation will be praying together at the Hour of Mercy Central Time. So 3 p.m. Central, you can figure out all the other ones, you know, it'd be 4 p.m. Eastern and, and so on. 
But and what, uh, what a group the, you the have! Glorious Washington. mysteries. What a group yeah. you have in Washington D.C. I saw, see Bishop. Carl. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, we have the uh, the auxiliary bishop for the military. We have got Sister Dee Dee. People might remember her from the Republican convention. Yeah. Uh, I guess Doug's going to be there too. Yeah. I, I saw you in the picture. There you go. Yeah. I, I, I get to, be, I get to be there too. Yeah. <laughs> I get to sit in the front row and watch father speak. Yeah. Right. It's usually the opposite. <laughs> I get to be a special guest at Doug's talks. You know, but <laughs> but uh, father, Stephen Emberato, you know, uh, he's a, a warrior wow. for life. So yeah, lots of great, um, uh, we're going to have uh, Monsignor Charles Pope. So it's oh. just, it's yeah, yeah. So And, and uh, you also had a Eucharistic procession. Yeah. And yeah. the, the web page. We're actually calling that, we're dubbing it the National Eucharistic Procession because um, we go right through, again, the, the streets of Washington, D.C., uh, up to that place that we are on the nation's capital. So, um, so everybody, please, please, united in prayer. Prayer is so powerful when we unite together. And we need a revival. And that, to, to me, it's all boiled down to that. You know, I, I think the radical secularists who I, that's, that's the term I use, people who have unfortunately lost their supernatural faith mm. um, are, are warring against God, against us. And, uh, and so we need to get our light to shine brighter and brighter and brighter and, uh, and reclaim the surrendered ground and see a, a, a revival in the land. And I think this is a powerful, powerful way to pray for that. Mm-hmm. Yep. And and Doug, you're busy. Every time I Google you right before the show, it was only two weeks ago. And I see you're right back at it again. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Go ahead. I, tell us a little bit about what's up. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Just, I just actually left a workshop that I was involved in to, to get on the radio show nice. here, which is uh, great to do. No, I, I, this is, this is great to do this. Um, um, and yeah, we're in the middle right now of our, a launch for our, what we call BREP, B-R-E-P, the Battle Ready Emergency Preparedness Course. You know, there's a lot going on right now with regards to, you know, natural problems. And a lot of people aren't taking seriously the need to be better prepared. And Father right. and I talk about this. We need to put in perspective, the spiritual preparation is a 24-7, 365. We need to be doing that all the time. Daily rosaries, Christ, auxiliary Christian norm prayers, adoration. You know, a person just needs to, to find that relationship with God on a daily basis and a deep prayerful basis. But on a natural level, there's a lot going on too. In fact, Jackson, Mississippi, this is the capital of Mississippi, 150,000 people and another community near it of about 11,000. They are out of water right now. This is day three. How can you okay. get out of water? The National Guard is handing out water. This has been on the news. It was on Tucker Carlson last night. It was on other news reports. A couple of days ago, a few days ago, they basically told the people in Jackson, we're, sh we're shutting the water down. The pumps aren't working. Okay, this isn't cyber attack. This isn't natural disaster. This is simply the infrastructure is failing. The pumps aren't working. The whole water system is falling apart. The National Guard's been called in to hand out water. People are lined up for long, long distances just to get drinking water, let alone water to flush your toilet or put out a fire if something catches on fire. They don't have access to it. They don't know how long it's going to be going on. Now, I say this to people to remind them that we wake up every morning, we just turn that handle, water comes out of the faucet. You know, we, we just, we, we go to the grocery store, there's food on the shelves. We are so comfortable and thanks be to God. We've been blessed like we've been blessed. However, we are not wise if we do not plan some contingency for an emergency, whether it's natural disaster, some sort of cyber attack, it could be a war. Look at Ukraine right now. Look what's happening in Venezuela. We've seen this. We know what goes on. We also know that there's a climate in our country that is a little sketchy. And I'm putting that very lightly uh, for the sake of many reasons. We shall not go into that right now, except to simply say that Father is right about the spiritual warfare. It is manifesting in many physical ways as well. Yeah. So we got to be better prepared. So we're doing workshops today. We have one at seven o'clock tonight, central time. People can still go out and sign up for it. It's free, brcoalition.com brcoalition.com. It's a free workshop. And we have the BREP course on sale. You can get that at brcoalition.com through um, the 6th of September, the day after Labor Day. And what the course does is it teaches people five key areas where you need to really take seriously to focus on water, food, shelter, medical, 
and defense, just protection and defense in case of a crisis. And then we break it down. The course has four hours plus a video. It's got 10 workbooks in it. We're trying to help people learn how to even change a flat tire, jumpstart a dead battery to securing your home if there's civil unrest. And we know that is going on in various places in the world. And this country experienced it a couple of years ago in 150 cities with riots. So right. it's important for us to think it's a very charitable thing to do to provide food, water, shelter, defense. Wait, corporal works of mercy, I think is what they're called, right? Right. So we have a responsibility to be prayerful, deeply encountering Christ in prayer and sacraments, our Blessed Mother, but we also have a responsibility to be there for each other's material needs. If there's a crisis where Father is, I guarantee you, um, there will be people who will come to his church, and they will knock on the door. Father, we need baby formula. We need diapers. We need food. We need this. Father has developed good relations with the men and the women in his parish. They will rally together because Father is building community and the resources are going to be there because people are going to pool those resources. That's part of Christian preparation. So we're offering the workshops and the course, and everything is through the eyes, the lens of the Catholic Church's teaching on preparing, on defense, and there is literally church teaching in the catechism on self-defense. There's major scripture references to natural preparation. One simple example, Joseph in the Old Testament, when Pharaoh has the dream of the fat cows, skinny cows, fat grain, skinny grain, Joseph says, you're going to have seven years of bounty and seven years of famine. This is going to be a one big bad boy of famine. What are you going to do? He goes around all the land of Egypt for seven years, and they prepare. They take measures of grain. Scripture says they took so much that they couldn't even measure how much they took. They were prepared. And all the other provisions that would have had to be there for that to take place, and it states that by the power of God working through this experience, everybody in the land of Egypt and surrounding provinces were saved because of God working through Joseph and even using Pharaoh. If you think about this, right? This was Pharaoh was used for God's plan, which is God's sense of humor, I think. But we have got to see what's going on and be better prepared. And body, mind, and soul, spiritually first, always, but also on a natural level, we've got to be thinking these things through. And that's what we're offering. So seven o'clock tonight, workshop, 7 p.m. Central, brcoalition.com. People can still go out and sign up. And we take a thousand, and if the people fill it up, then you will get the replay in an in email. It will be sent to you, so you will get access to it, even if you don't get into the live, because we can only take a, the first thousand that are that are uh, that are there. Yeah. Right. Go, ahead. Go ahead, Father. Well, I was just going to say this is the hand we've been dealt. This is the times we're living in. Yep. You know, we we've, we've just gone through these these two and a half years, and uh, it, among many other things, it exposed the corruption at at all levels of power. Uh, that that is going on right now, and uh, and so we, we just don't know right now. I, I'm always a hopeful person. I, I do think you know that we need to. Our first move is to to get that renewal going, to reclaim that surrendered ground, to to ma make this nation one g nation under God once again. Um, but but it Doug's right. I mean, we just got comfortable. We just you know you got you went to the store, you got this, you got this, and uh, you could afford it, and then, and. And uh, so uh, we're, we're not ready for any eventuality, whatever mm -hmm. that might might be. Right. But but my point is is that what well, one thing that we've become aware of is the corruption at all levels of power right now, and so that makes it a little tenuous right now. And you can't trust what the lo the level of power. I keep using general terms, uh, but you know what I'm talking about. You can't trust these levels of power anymore and so it's kind of up to us and you brought in corporal works of mercy i mean yeah be prepared take care of your own make sure make sure your loved ones are safe protected well fed and all that stuff but but also you know hopefully you have enough for those who didn't you know prepare as well and and you can you can reach out and yeah. and assist them and if any crisis or eventuality it might happen you know it's a lot more dangerous now too, I think, with the dangerous. centralization of power between electricity. I know mm -hmm. one of the neighborhoods across the street from ours, they regulate how much electricity each house can use. Wow. And they can decide how the elect because they're they're a um, what do you want to call it? like a green community where they oh. they all agree not to, not to use too much electricity now. But I mean, how do they know? One might have seven children and there might be one person living alone and another one, but with that centralization even to your electricity. 
for some of the homes and the smart homes or power just, you know, uh, generate oh, having a well, generator. And I'm sorry, Andrew, could you repeat that? So the audience can really get this right. You're telling me that there's a neighborhood where people are regulating how much electricity the neighbor across the street is using. How does that work? Well, my understanding of it is that when you move into this development, that you're moving into this, um, it's kind of like an avant-garde kind of um, development. And what they do is they say, you know, they only want people to, they want you to be very um, measured in how much electricity you use. Hmm. So more and more, what they're able to do is to control, like if you've used too much electricity that month, or I don't know if they can actually shut it off the way they can from a smart home, but they can measure your your electricity usage in that community because you're essentially agreeing that you're going to preserve, uh-huh. yeah. um, you know, you're going to preserve electricity, but the, the natural corollary of that, and I think it happened somewhere in Texas that I had heard about the natural corollary is someone's making decisions mm-hmm. about how much electricity should be allocated to whom. And you wonder, is there going to be like, oh, well, this is a group that got me elected. So we better not shut off his power or say that he used too much. And this is a group that maybe, maybe they were on the other side of the, um, the political. Well, wait a minute, you're, well. you're, Angela, you're implying that some sort of human weakness or concern for human respect would, would somehow get it's involved fun. in this. How could, how could that be? <laughs> yeah, just a far out idea. But I mean, yeah. you think, and also with, with the credit, you know, with credit and the pulling back of currency and the rumors of pulling back of, yeah, on um, the dollar bill, then what do you use to uh, procure- I caught a glimpse of a story earlier today that there's one part of the country where people were hot. So they went to turn their air conditioning down and it wouldn't let them because there was some kind of central control mm, that mm. stopped them from, you know, using their air conditioner ba- basically. I mean, and to this, to their surprise, you know, they, they didn't know that that was possible. Uh, so and when you, you know, say it, down, you mean cooled off. They wanted cooled to turn off, it right, right. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanted. They, wouldn't let them turn it down. Yeah, it was well, getting really it, hot, and they needed to cool off. You know, and that is one of the concerns. You know, Angela, you mentioned that about the dollar. There's a lot of talk about the digital dollar coming, and some are saying as soon as December. Now, the talk from experts, and these are experts in the field that have said we are moving towards a digital dollar. You can find this on video. These are the experts, the people involved on government levels. But they're talking about programming the dollar as well. So then you will be allowed X amount of dollars, digital dollars, for gasoline, potentially, for meat, if you're buying too much meat. Anything that could interfere with, and I don't see how anybody doesn't see this coming, the green push. Everything is about the green push now. California, just a few days ago, passed a law that by 2035, they will no longer sell gas-powered cars in California. Now, 14 other states at least have jumped on board with that. This is all green push is what it is. Europe is doing the same thing. Europe is telling us, they're telling their people right now that this coming winter, they're going to be limiting how much fuel they're going to have. They're going to tell them what they can set their thermostats at. All this is based on the green push. It's the climate. It's all about the climate. And this isn't hidden anymore. So I'm not talking conspiracy theory here. You know, Father, hearing that about the, them putting restrictions on turning your thermostat down, I completely, I completely get it because that's exactly the direction they're going. And they'll claim it largely under emergency right. circumstances. It's an emergency. We have to do this, and you just have to accept it. We spent it. two and a half years being conditioned to comply to emergency situations. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah. Father, you're absolutely right. But here in Illinois, the issue was we had one man, our governor, he had, he had emergency powers, but he decided what was essential. He decided what wasn't essential. What was the first thing in Illinois they decided was essential? The marijuana parlors. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what did they decide wasn't essential? The Catholic Church. Catholic Church. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, who is the person and we let him. That's, who's that little managing the puppet strings that decides how much each person gets? We have the oversight. Who elected that person God of the entire economy Right at, yeah. at the individual level? I mean, those are the things that are challenging. So, but so Doug, if we were all to be, I am in your battle, battle ready coalition uh, group, but I mean, what are the practical things that people, I mean, I know people say, well, we'll go buy a generator and we'll stockpile mm-hmm. water. Mm-hmm. Does water go bad? 
Water can go bad. If you're going to stockpile it, you do need to treat it. You have the right containers to put it in. Um, if you're going to buy it from the grocery store, there are some, some you can get now in BPA-free plastic, which is you want to store, you don't want to store anything long-term in anything that's not BPA-free plastic. What that basically means is less, if any, chemical from the plastic will leach into the water eventually. Regular plastic, that's going to happen, especially in extreme heat and extreme cold. So if you're going to store water, uh, make sure that you're storing it in BPA-free plastic. If you're going to store it in a container that you purchase and you're filling it up, you filter the water. We always recommend you put in something called aerobic stabilized oxygen, which is little drops. You put these drops in per gallon, like a dozen drops per five gallons. It, it, it's on the it's on the directions there. And the aerobic stabilized oxygen is a natural saline approach to keeping bacteria, little green algae, growing in, from growing in the water. Um, you can store it up to six or seven years that way. Mm-hmm. Now, the other question then gets to, well, where do I put all this water from? I'm going to store up hundreds of gallons of water. And the average person needs about a gallon a day just to drink to be reasonably healthy, about a gallon. If you're a nursing mother, a pregnant mother, or you're a worker, you're out there exerting a lot of energy, that's going to be more. So how do you store a gallon a day per person in your family? For how many days? How many days? For how many days? Exactly. Because you don't know how long you might need it. So storing water is important, but then having the ability to filter water in case you have to tap into a stream or a river of some sort, you want to be able to filter water. So we, we encourage things like Life Straw or Sawyer. These are good companies. Berkey is another, and there are many others out there, but everybody should have some sort of filtering system in case you have to get water from another source and you don't know if it's clean. I mean, I filter the water out of that comes out of the, out of the community water anyway, because they put so many things in the water and there's metals in the water at times. So I just bought a little thing from the local department store you pour water in it and it filters out and it's just a pitcher, just a pitcher with a filter in it. And a lot of people use those. Use this on a bigger scale though. So I keep in my vehicle, um, I keep um, what's called a Sawyer Mini and I can actually attach it to a water bottle, like a Dasani or Aquafina water bottle. And I can drink right out of that and that purifies water. So if I have an empty Dasani bottle somewhere and I have to go to a stream or a river and I scoop it out of there, I can screw the Sawyer Mini on the top and drink right out of it. That's an emergency circumstance, obviously. But when you look at people like Jackson, Mississippi right now, those poor people out there, they can't flush toilets. They don't have water for taking care of laundry, washing dishes, things of that nature. Well, what do you do? Well, there are even means that we should be, steps we should be taking. And we actually talk about this in the workshop tonight at seven o'clock central time about how to create a compost toilet in case you can't flush a toilet and you're stuck in an apartment building or you can't just go outside and dig a hole in the backyard, which is not the most comfortable thing. What do you do? Well, you can use a couple of five gallon buckets and create a toilet system out of that. And so we're going to talk about that in the workshop. These are basic things that face it. Everybody needs, you need water and you need a toilet. You need to be able to deal with these things. It's the way God built us. You need food, you need medical care. But I would say this in general, everybody right now, Start by prioritizing. Like if you sign up for the workshop, we have a free, a free download that you can get, which gives you basic steps that are very, very entry level and gets you going the right direction. Because a lot of people panic. They don't know where to start. They don't have maybe a lot of money and you can do it on a budget. You really can. But you've got to prioritize. You've got to see where your, where your points are strong or where your points are weak. And then you've got to start acting upon those points. Um, we just had Abby Johnson on our podcast. She's on, uh, we just released it yesterday. And she's been prepping. Okay. She's a pro-lifer. She prays constantly. She's in close relationship with God and her and her husband are taking serious steps. Yeah. They became experts. They really did. Yeah. Wow. I had to, ed- in fact, I edited out some of what she said because I thought she was revealing so much. I didn't want to put her in danger <laughs> if people, <laughs> if they know what they're doing. So I, anyway, that's all I'm going to say, but they are really, really taking serious steps. And she put it this way. I have eight children that are on loan from God. My job is to take care of them in this world. This is one of the ways I have to take care of them, that they're fed, they're clothed, they have medical care, they're protected, they're defended. Everybody should look at it that way. We're here to help each. And like like Father mentioned, our job is to be in a position where we can reach out to others. And I think you said it too, Angela. The job of a Catholic in this world, be a source of hope. Cooperate with God's grace and be a source of hope. And one of the quotes we use in BR Coalition, again, brcoalition.com for people who want to check it out, is you find a hope when you're faced with a crisis, you find hope with a plan of action. Now, that could be spiritual action. 
If you're in the state of serious sin, mortal sin, and you know, man, I'm in trouble. What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the plan of action? I go to Father Heilman. Heilman. When I go to Father Heilman. <laughs> I go to Father Heilman's 24 seven confessional. Exactly. There you go. Right. But the source of hope when you're in sin is the sacrament of confession. The source of hope when someone's sick and they put out a prayer request and it goes viral, Father puts out a prayer request to the U.S. Grace Force, so that's 80,000 participants jumping in. That act of prayer is hope. So the same with food and water and medical. If Angela, if you're walking through a parking lot at a grocery store at night and some thug comes and starts trying to attack you and you scream for help, and then some guy you know, across the parking lot hears and starts running over and he's going to engage and defend you, you find hope with his action. Okay. We're built this way. So as Catholics, we've got to get through our head that while we all say we want to trust Jesus, and I do, I also trust the brain he put between my ears to take natural steps in the world that I live in, that he put me in. Right. And I take those steps within prayerful reason, of course, but I take those steps because God put me in this state. I have to pay my electricity. I have to pay my water bill. I do this anyway. I don't just trust Jesus that it's going to get paid. I've tried that. They threaten to shut it off every time. Okay. So <laughs> you've got to take the natural steps because we live in a natural world. One of the things that I, I wanted to highlight is that, well, first of all, um, Doug and I always joke that, you know, um, I'm naively hopeful, and, <laughs> and, but Doug's a realist and uh, I'm becoming more and more that way. But the reason I'm leaning more into this now is because uh, uh, in earlier days, you had a confidence, a trust in your leadership. Yeah, and whether that was in government or your spiritual leadership, you you had a confidence and trust in them that that they. they where is that now? I mean, it, because, and that's why too. I I think I call them again the radical secularists, those who have lost supernatural faith that are coming in and invading. Uh, but but there's a lust for power, and that that's really you know that's that's the uh, original sin. Basically, it's pride, but it, but. There's a lust for power I've never seen before, but I, I think it's emboldened because of the uh, the evidence that our leadership is not that strong. And so that makes it very dangerous right now. And we don't, I don't, I don't want to pick, predict the future, but I do want to be realistic. And I, I, and I'm so appreciative of Doug, how he's, you know, invested himself so much into helping all of us to understand, you know, here's how we can be prepared just in case, you know, but, but like I said, the evidence that, that our spiritual, uh, what it was, the, the quote I always use, well, it's from the, it's, 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 uh, it rose to the title of, of this um, journal that I put together, Peace Through Strength, but we maintain the peace through our strength. Weakness only invites aggression. What we've found out, especially in the last two and a half years, we're weak, especially at the leadership level, in all areas, and uh, and so uh, you see uh, the enemy uh, uh, aggressive right now because this is our time. We got to take it now. We got to move in, yeah. and so that's that's a dangerous dangerous time. And so yeah. we want to pray first. And I'm praying especially for our own leaders mm -hmm. to become strong again. And uh, it's kind of pervasive, Father. It's it's not just political leadership. I mean, I'm not I talking about political. It. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, spiritual. It's spiritual. It's in healthcare. Yeah, education, healthcare. Yeah, education. Yeah, law enforcement. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you just go across the board. It's like military. We're, we're, military yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like the total i think we're starting to witness almost like the total collapse of integrity at right. every yes. single institution yeah. that we have we've just counted on all throughout the all, yeah. all throughout our we, lives. we just we just checked the box and we trusted them we're good to go not and, and, so much and there have been messages from people who very faithful people catholics who in the past said that they they believe they received messages from god i won't name any names but People who claim they believe God told them that all of our major institutions would lose credibility, that they would all be compromised, and that they would all be, in many ways, um, leading people astray 
through all of these different things that we're seeing. And yeah. if there's anything that really undermines a society, and this really is a Marxist effort, a communist effort, is you right. demoralize people. And how do you demoralize? Yeah. Well, you demoralize by people not having confidence in anybody. If there's no accountability, for crimes that take place, especially on high levels. And without getting into detail, we all know we could look at certain crimes that have happened and there's no accountability. Other things that were claimed to be crimes that really weren't, and yet those people are being run through the mill. We see this everywhere on all different levels, whether it is in the church or in government. And we see a real lack of confidence in accountability for people who are seriously involved in dangerous or criminal acts. The Jackson, Mississippi problem is largely a structural problem that just let they just let it go. Just caught up with them. You can tell when you look at your pumps for a water treatment plant, these are getting old. They need to be replaced. We need to allocate funds for this because if we don't allocate funds for a water treatment plant, our entire society, our entire city is going to have some serious problems and that could lead even more problems. This could lead to dis, uh, dis, disruption of other services. It could lead to civil unrest because people do desperate things when they're desperate for the basics like water. So we hope and pray it doesn't get to that point, but this is a leadership issue above everything else. The money yeah. is available in this country and in this world to take the steps necessary to fix infrastructure, but a lot of people are in the corrupted areas of life of these departments and it's across the board. And it's, it's just corruption, havoc. It's yeah. corruption. And then it's fear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because if a person, a person might not be corrupt per se, but they're fearful of the corrupt people. And so they do their bidding. And, uh, and so it's just, it, it's a, it's a breakdown that we're again, uh, a bright shining light is happening right now. And maybe this is a, a kind of illumination or the, or it is the illumination. I don't know. But uh, but we're 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 uh, made to see the condition that we're in right now, and it's it's just it's not good. And so, yep, it's dangerous right now. But again, with God, all things are possible. I, I want want to make sure, but uh, but I also don't want to hide behind prayer either. We got to act in whatever way yeah. God is is calling us to act. Um, and and yeah, God's going to do it, but he but he's going to do it through us, you know. And so, um, so th these are uh, tenuous, uh, dangerous times that we're living in right now. Yeah. You've yeah. done shows with Father Chad Ripperger, Father, and what it, is this? Is this a spiritual battle as far as oh, yeah. what, what's this acceleration that's going on that we see even in our own la lifetime? Is there a different level of things that are going on that's accelerating? You know, the yeah. concern we have on the physical plane. Well, I, you know, this, this, this just came to mind when I uh, tried to see what's going on. I'm in this school of thought, you know, the church does, isn't, isn't teaching that you absolutely have to believe this at all, but I'm in the school of thought that we just uh, went through a hundred years of the reign of Satan, which would be uh, 1917 to 2017. And I believe what's going on right now is Satan throwing everything, including the kitchen sink at us to re, re, re uh, to recover. Uh, his reign. And, uh, and that's why too, part of the hopeful part is this illumination. So first of all, we're seeing the evil for what it is, where it kind of hid in the darkness before and kind of had its way. Now it's just, it's, it's having a, uh, a panic attack mm. and it's, and it's just doesn't care that you see it. And at the same time, we're, we're being exposed to, as I said, um, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of poor le weak leadership on on the side of morals and ethics and principles of of God of the will of God, uh, whether that's in the in the uh, in, in the secular world or in the church, uh, we're seeing just a, a real a light a, a powerful light being shine in that. So the, then the hope is one we know what we're fighting against because we're seeing the evil. But two, we start correcting this weak leadership that we have uh, in the secular world and in the church. Yeah. And I would say add to that too, Father, if you remember when Father Ripker was on one of our podcasts um, several months back, many months back, he did bring up uh, that he said, we, they, exorcists in general, are seeing the good Catholic, meaning those who are striving to be faithful. Of course, we're all sinners. We established that, but they're striving. They're, they're going to the sacraments. They're praying. They're getting their prayers in, their devotions, their, their daily engaging they want relationship God. with God. Yeah, they're trying to please God. Yeah. They're trying to cooperate with grace. And he says, we are seeing them 
go through certain struggles and temptations that we have never really seen in their time, at least before. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, it's some of it is on the level of, and these, this is how he put it. Some of them are on the level as if, as if someone, when someone is dabbling in something like Ouija boards, whatever there was sometimes because that opens a portal, there will sometimes be um, all sorts of a different attacks and different temptations that come at them. He said, that sort of thing is being experienced with people who aren't dabbling. They're trying to be faithful. They're living in a way to try to please God. And yet God is allowing them to go through some real trials. And I said, well, Father, and this is on the podcast, so someone could go back and find it. Any of the Father Ripperger podcasts are all great. He just does amazing, amazing things. But I said, Father, are we talking about things flying around the room? Are we talking about interior temptations or you know, lights and pulling being messed with? And he said, yes, <laughs> basically all of it. So he and I said, well, we talked with him about it. Why do you think this is happening? And in a nutshell, to paraphrase, he basically said he believes that God is allowing us to be tested in ways to prepare us for another level and raise our ability to fight the good fight like you would take a good soldier and put them through special operations, special forces, raise them to the level of a Navy SEAL, Green Beret. You move them to another level. He said just to stay sane on the battlefield stay strong in the fight. We are being put through certain temptations and trials because as he said, when you think it gets bad, you realize it could get even worse. Mm -hmm. So father Ripperger is saying, yes, the spiritual temptations and fight are big. They're big. And there's a lot of manifestation of, as he referred to in another podcast, the top five demons that sit at the table. They refer to this in the exorcism world the table of Lucifer and these top five demons. And I don't want to name any of them, but you know, we are familiar with many of the old Testament. Well, ball is one of them. And we hear these, these, these child sacrifice and twisting of, of gender and all these real abusive, bizarre sort of things. And he says, our country has legalized the work that these five demons do. He said, that's a different level of portal with the evil. So we are in a unique situation here. There was a time when so-called same-sex marriage was not legal. There was a time when transgender, his father, you know, really the gripe of uh, that father and I have is when you, you know, we talk about this a lot in our podcast is all of a sudden now men can go into bathrooms with little girls and into locker rooms and shower rooms. And what in the world? Are you kidding me? But this has all been legalized and defended. And if you speak out against it, you're a hater. This is where we are. Well, Father Ripper will tell you, this is the work of some of these top five demons. It's all been legalized and protected now. That changes the dynamic of the battle. So it is deeply spiritual in this battle, and it's manifesting in these natural physical ways like laws and behavior and such. And this is where we are. We have got to toughen up. God's grace is amazing. We've got to cooperate with it. He'll get us through if we cooperate, but we've got to take the steps to build some spiritual grit inside of us that says, I am willing to go in. I love Father always says this, I'm going in. And we have to have that attitude. I'm going in. I'm not right. sitting on the sidelines. Let's roll, right? Remember, let's roll. Yeah, and it makes it tough too because of the cancel culture that's going on right now. It's 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 very, very effective. And that that just means that um, if you, like Doug said, if you dare speak up, there'll be ramifications. You'll be persecuted or ho however that, that happened. And, and, and right now, as I said, our current leadership is uh, doing the bidding of the cancelers. And so it's, it's, uh, it's become very, very difficult uh, to speak up and to, because, you know, the list that you just gave Doug, I mean, I, I know for me and, and I'll speak for myself, but 2015 and the Obergfell decision that you, that you talked about uh, to uh, legalize gay marriage, to basically say marriage can mean anything you want. I mean, right after that, they were talking about marrying your cocker spaniel and all that stuff. Mm. But, but, but to, to make marriage something it's never been in the history of civilization, all, all at once. Uh, I was like, "You really? You're, you're kidding me!" And 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 then we just contemplate everything that's happened since then. And I remember Bishop Morlino, my uh, my bishop. Uh, he bishop. he would say he had this mantra: "Truth with love, but the truth." Okay. But the, the, the ramifications of that are great if, uh, you know, if, if you're deciding to do that and you're not, you're not being uh, uh, supported for doing that. So, and that, so it's, it's, we're, we're in a very tenuous position right now. 
we got to pray like we've never prayed before. Yeah. Uh, but we also have to, to uh, somehow find the courage to speak up when it's very difficult to do so. Well, that's why I hope everyone who's listening will go to your website, U.S. Grace Forest. Look at those. I mean, that rosary is so powerful, coast to coast and in public places. You know, I know that in a lot of apparition sites, Our Lady asked that they process the Eucharist through the streets. Right. But I think it has a double benefit now. It has that one, the spiritual benefit, but also to, to say we're not going to take it. You right. know, for if, mm-hmm. imagine if every community had one of your rosaries, like you said, and we went to the map and there was one. And er- so if there's already one, what can we do? We can just join the one that's already in place. Right, right. Is that correct? But if there's that's not, correct. maybe there's a listener out there that's willing to say, hey, why why don't I work? And I, I mean, even if it's five or 10 people, Father, would that exactly. satisfy two the requirement? People. Two people. Yeah. Oh, two. There you go. Uh, we're two or more gathered. You know? yeah, yeah. October 9th. What a beautiful day for us yeah. to do right after the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. go to um go to you as a US Grace Force that's how I go. Uh, I think it was yes, you can find you thing. you can you can find the information there at usgraceforce.com, mm-hmm. but also uh where we kind of compiled everything, the uh Rosary Coast to Coast and National Rosary Rally information at rosarycoasttocoast.com. That's probably the best place. And it's such a great shot in the arm to the everyday priests that we run into here at the radio station to see that the laity with the priests are doing this. That yes. they're, you know, that power that's coming from them, that power. Of Do we believe in the supernatural power of God or not? Right. I mean, that's what this boils down to. Uh, it, uh, it was uh, Dr. Alice Van Hildebrand said, let's not talk about right and left and liberal conservatives. You know, that confuses me. Let's talk about those who still have a belief in the supernatural power of God and those who don't. That's the great divide, she said. And, and it's so true. That's the war we're in right now. Is that is that if you have belief in the supernatural power of God, you can't not speak up, Be, because again, Oprah fell. I, 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 that's I, that's when I believe Bishop Morlino was was really almost begging his priest to c- come on. We got to be clear and 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 help our people to understand that this is the what God wants, not this over here. Uh, but but uh, but when you have the supernatural power of God, when you got grace on you. You're like, of course I got to do this. Of course I have to be clear with the teachings of, of the church. Of course I can't allow uh, this this new secular religion to take control and to devour all of my loved ones. I mean, if I find if I hear one more story of somebody whose child is getting into a gay marriage or you know living with a gay love, uh, that's just one. I mean, or wants to change their gender. I mean, it's just, it's so pervasive. And again, I think it's either corruption or it's fear of those who are corrupt that's going on right now. And uh, we got it. We got to, we need a revival. Yeah. <laughs> we got to yeah. turn the corner. Well, it is the infiltration, like Molly was telling us that her nine-year-old brother was at the doctor and Molly, what did they say to him? Are you happy with your body or something? Yeah. yeah. She, yeah. They asked a nine-year-old if he's happy with his body, wow. his doctor. Are you happy with how you look? Are you happy with how you look? Are you happy with your body? I mean, mm. so they're planting the seeds at this yes. incredibly impressionable age. Yeah. And it's a concerted effort. It's an orchestrated effort. And it's being yep. asked by a doctor, a healthcare professional, where you have that in level of trust. At, yeah. At that age. yeah. 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 You know, Doug, one of the things I was looking at your one, one quick question I had to ask you this, you talked about having a second, I'm looking for the right word. It was a second location or an escape location, or tell us what that was behind that. Yeah. Secondary shelter is secondary shelter. Thank you. Yeah. And, and the main, the point we're getting at there is, you know, when people are, are looking at any kind of serious situation that happens, they look at their home as their primary shelter. This is where I'm going to go. People have these ideas that, if there's a serious crisis, I'm getting together with family and friends. We're going to meet here at this one location, and this is it, all of our gear, and we're together. I'm willing to bet that that probably isn't going to happen for most people. Okay, you need to have second, third, fourth places where you can go if you need to. If your home gets compromised because of a storm or civil unrest or a war, something, anything out of the blue, and you can't stay there anymore for some reason, Already now be developing relationships with others, community where they know they could come to you, you could go to them. I have locations all over the country where I could go, friends that I've worked with, whether it's New Mexico or California, 
No, it wouldn't be California. I could go. <laughs> I could go to Wisconsin. Father would let me come up there if I needed to. You know, in other words, you build relationships with people with the understanding that if everything hits the fan and things get rough, we have a second, third, fourth location for shelter. This is what we do as Christians. We are there for each other. We have each other's back, and you discuss it in advance so that it is understood. If I show up, I'll bring what I can, and we'll work together. We'll be a community. Of, of Christ here, and we will be we will be a source of hope, and we but we've got to be thinking of these other locations because it's too easy to put all your eggs in one basket, and you and that could be your home, and if that goes compromised for some reason, you could find yourself in a real world of hurt. So have these other locations ready to go with the relationships already built. What's interesting is that I was thinking secondary lo- until you just explained that I was thinking just maybe a neighbor next door. Mm. But what you're pointing out is that if there's a whole geographical area that's been compromised, yep. you got to think bigger than that. Exactly. Different yeah. re- region of the country and different relationships. Yeah. And you look at the division in our country right now, and I pray with Father. We pray unity, please, unity. We hope and pray for that. But we've also seen the last two and a half years a lot of division based on where you stand and how far apart you stand, not to mention, you know, a needle and all this stuff. I mean, we have seen the division in families. We've seen it in states. We've seen the country go crazy. Right now, New York, they've made Times Square a gun-free zone, okay, because of a Supreme Court decision. They are really restricting people. Meanwhile, down here in Texas, they just announced that 18 to 20-year-olds can open carry. So you've got these divisions here. Now, I, everybody should be well-trained if they're into firearms. I, let's establish that. Really well-trained and morally grounded, of course. But the point is, the division is clear. I could see division in the country on bigger levels, and you might you know, people are moving from one part of the country to another simply because of a certain political climate or what have you. We know that this could happen on a larger scale, and it could be whether it's natural disaster or something else that's driven by mankind. We know that it's a good idea to know if I got to go somewhere else, I got to go. Look, when Russia invaded Ukraine, over 5 million refugees had to flee into Poland. Wow. You know, and, and their homes are devastated, some of them now. So there are places in the history of mankind where people have had to leave their country and never gone back. Um, in the film we put out, Doomed to Repeat It, we have two uh, Cuban refugees there. And, and, and Ca- um, Carlos, one of our, of our guests on the show, on the movie, said when we left, he's one of the Peter Pan, Operation Peter Pan children as a teenager, came to the U.S. Everybody in Cuba thought that Castro's reign would only last a few months. Okay, it's still communist down there and Castro's dead. So this is not something to take lightly. If if your geographic location gets compromised, you might have to go to a whole nother area. So and you don't want that to happen. We hope and pray it doesn't. But we know that it has happened and does happen. And so you're better off to have that conversation now with loved ones and family and friends so that you're not devastated if that ever comes to your doorstep. We pray it doesn't, but it might. Mm -hmm. So brcoalition.com, everybody, a lot of information out there. Did you say seven o'clock tonight? Yes. Seven Um, central is our workshop tonight. Free workshop. You get a free download uh, on there, a couple different downloads. And then um, if if you can't get in because it fills up, we can take the first thousand. Um, then you will get you will get it sent to you in an email once we do the the recording. It'll be sent to you in an email. So people will you just go out to brcoalition.com to sign up for it. You will get access to it whether it's live or a recording later. Yeah. I don't know anybody that I've ever interviewed or I've read about that has taken this whole strategy to heart the way you have, Doug. I mean, it's not right. just this high level conceptual. I mean, you have it down, you have it broken down into categories, practical advice. I mean, it's just amazing how you've spent, how many years have you been working at this? Oh boy. I probably started talking about it. Well, I've been speaking for 32 years. I probably started talking about these types of things, maybe 20, 25 years ago. And then it developed into the last 12, 15 years where we really started to get into the the weeds of different items and testing things like flashlights to battery power stations, to how to have a go bag put together in your vehicle, which I have in mind. And I've used several times for different reasons. Um, Having just supplies with you at all times, I've been able to help a homeless guy 
on the road because I had extra protein bars in my go bag. I mean, there are so many ways you can help people by just having provisions with you and near you. Not to mention, I don't go anywhere without a tactical flashlight in my pocket. And I use it almost every day, whether it's lighting up the parking lot or checking my backyard or helping somebody, you know, uh, someone's walking to the grocery out of a grocery store to their car. I've lit it up for, for uh, someone else, but you have it to help people. I don't know why we wouldn't want to be better prepared to help other people. Right. It, to me, it's just, it blows my mind that people don't take some basic steps at least to be ready to help other people in, in any and all situations. God love you. And Father, I, we only have a few minutes. I've, I've, go ahead, Father. Well, I was just going to say I, I, I'm, what I'm thinking about right now. First of all, thanks, Doug, for your dedication Thank to this. You. And, but uh, also, I'm, I'm really proud of the United States Grace Force. You know, Amen. We're, we're right around 80,000 strong right now. Uh, and if anybody wants to be a part of it, you, I call it enlist, but uh, you go to U- usgraceforce.com, you'll find a place to click on and and just give your name and email and you're in. And what are we doing? Well, this is why I'm proud of them is, is that, yes, we're learning the art of spiritual warfare and, and, and we're engaging that through prayers that have been revealed by God to be powerful prayers. So we're not making a new religion up. We're not making anything up. We want to use what God's revealed. So we're doing that. But but the work that the United States Grace Force is doing to become strong, right? Now, f- physically strong, strong in their preparation, but spiritually strong is uh, is just amazing. And I, I hear from people all over the country, actually all over the world, and how their faith life has just uh, exploded. It's just grown. Uh, they, they feel Herculean in, 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 their, uh, in their spiritual lives. Uh, and and grown in their their belief in the power of grace. See, it's that belief. The stronger your belief, the more powerful in grace you become. Uh, and and th- th- that's just grown by leaps and bounds. And and I think that's the big reason we're seeing uh, so many miracles. And also, our you know our God, the way God is answering our prayers and in, in, in the way he, he knows best. He's our dad. But uh, but so many ways in which uh, we're turning a corner. Uh, but again, it's that dedication to strength. We maintain the peace through our strength. Weakness only invites aggression. We've gone through 50 years of fitting out our faith to become some kind of secular group meeting, okay? And we're we're saying no to that any longer, and we're we're recovering every way that we can to become supernaturally strong and also physically strong and also uh, strong in our preparation. So um, I'm so proud of the United States Grace Force. And please join us if you haven't. And I'm so pleased to to interview you once a month. I'm so grateful for you to be on the show. And Father, will you give your closing blessing? Sure. Okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 God bless you and have a wonderful Labor Day.